Senator from Tennessee. Uh, Mr. President, I ask the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. I ask consent that I be a, a permitted to make some remarks, followed by the Senator from California, after which the Senate would go back into a quorum call. Yes, you, can't, you can't order a quorum call. So just note the absence, note the absence. I notice the absence of a quorum. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Alexander. Mr. President. Senator from Tennessee. I ask the quorum call be vitiated. Without objection. I ask consent to Senator Feinstein and I uh, be allowed to speak, uh, me first and she second. Without objection. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Mr. President, um, in the next few minutes, Senator Feinstein and I will uh, submit for the Senate's consideration the first appropriations bill uh, of the year. This will be the energy and water appropriations bill. It will be the earliest that any appropriations bill has been submitted since the Budget Act was passed in 1974. This is a good sign for the United States Senate. Uh, it means that we're serious about our most basic constitutional responsibilities, which is the oversight of the spending of money, the setting of priorities, and doing it in a way that allows every senator to participate. I'm privileged to be able to work with Senator Feinstein, who is able to um, um, come to a result after we have examined an important piece of legislation. She has a background as a manager, as a mayor, as a chairman of important committees, and uh, I'm very privileged to have the chance to work with her, whether we're in the majority or, or the minority. Before I talk about the bill specifically, since this is the first bill, I'd like to say a few words about the money we're spending. This year, the Budget Control Act, which the United States Senate adopted in 2015, which is the law, passed by the Senate by a vote of 64 to 35, October 30th of last year. This year, the Budget Control Act sets the amount of money that we're to spend at one trillion and seven hundred thousand uh, at one trillion and seven thousand dollars, one point oh seven trillion dollars. Our bill, the Energy and Water Bill, will be thirty-seven point five billion of that approximately one trillion dollars. However, Mr. President, the entire federal budget is a lot more than one trillion dollars. In fact, it is four times as much. The entire federal budget this year is $3.9 billion, nearly $4 trillion. So we're talking about appropriated dollars of about a trillion dollars, plus about three trillion other dollars that we'll spend this year through the federal government. Those dollars are what we call mandatory or automatic spending, plus interest on the debt. Federal health care spending, as an example, is about $1 trillion, about the same amount as all of the 12 appropriations bills that we'll be considering. The Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services head, Mr. Slavitt, is in charge of spending about $886 billion every year, almost all mandatory spending. So the part of the budget that we're talking about today and we'll be talking about for the next 12 weeks is one-fourth of the total federal spending. I want to thank Senator McConnell, the Majority Leader, for, for making this a priority. I want to thank Senator Reid, the Democratic Leader, for uh, suggesting to Senator McConnell and to all of us on behalf of the Democrats that they too want to see us move through the process. This gives the American people a chance to see how we spend their money. And the American people care about how we spend their money because we have a big debt. There's a lot of talk about that debt, which is $19 trillion. And this year, the total revenues of the federal government are about $3.36 billion, but the spending is about 3.9. So elementary school mathematics will show you that we're adding about $534 billion more 
to our $19 trillion debt this year. Well, Mr. President, it's important to point out that the spending that we're talking about in this bill and the other 11 discretionary bills is not the problem. I'd like to ask the chair to look at the bottom line in front of me, the blue line. That is what we call the discretionary spending. That is the money that the Appropriations Committee works on. That's the trillion dollars that we're appropriating in these bills. It's been flat since 2008, and it's rising at about the rate of inflation over the next 10 years, according to the Congressional Budget Office. So if the entire budget had followed the path of that blue line on the bottom, that's the money that we're in charge of in the Appropriations Committee, we would not have a debt problem. Now look, where is the debt problem coming from? That's the automatic mandatory spending, that red line. And that does not even include the interest on the federal debt. So I've suggested in our conference that maybe what the United States Senate would want to do is turn the entire budget over to the Appropriations Committee. Because we're doing our job, and apparently the rest of the Senate, or all of us as a whole, are not doing our job in running up a big federal debt. Senator Feinstein and I have been presented an amount of money by the committee and by the Senate that we allocate. We've done that through four hearings. I'll be talking about those. We have set priorities, we've cut wasteful spending, and we're beginning to get big construction projects under control. We've eliminated funding for a fusion project in France that saves $125 million in a year, which we can then put on other priorities. We've got the uranium processing facility in Oak Ridge, Tennessee now on a project where it will be 90% designed before it's built and it will be on time and on budget before it's finished. We're working with the Armed Services Committee to try to do a similar kind of thing with a mock facility in South Carolina. We have a red team, the kind of red team that helped us in Oak Ridge in South Carolina working on the New Mexico construction projects. So our oversight working together is saving the taxpayers money, staying within the budget, and I'm glad to say that we're not part of the debt problem. Now, sometime, we as a full Senate will start working on that top line. Senator Corker and I have a bill that would reduce that top line growth by a trillion dollars over the next 10 years. The problem is Senator Corker and I are the only co-sponsors of the bill. So we'll not be talking about that much today, I understand there may be an attempt to change the level of funding that we make. And I'll talk about that at the time this afternoon when the amendments come up. But just so that everybody's thinking about that beforehand, number one, we're following the law. That's where our budgeting is. Number two, we're, the, the budget committee of the Senate has begun to start its budget process based upon the number uh, that the law sets. And number three, our appropriations bills are not the debt problem. It is the mandatory spending and interest on the debt, and sooner or later we need to deal with it. Now, Mr. President, last Thursday, Senator Feinstein and I and the Senate Appropriations Committee approved the fiscal year 2017 Energy and Water Development Appropriations Bill by unanimous vote 30 to nothing. 30 of the 100 members of this body are on that committee. They all voted for it. This bill includes some items very familiar to the American people, things that they would like for us to fund properly, such as flood control, such as navigation on our rivers, such as, such as deepening harbors, whether it's in California or in Mobile or in Charleston or in Savannah, such as rebuilding locks, whether they're in Ohio or Kentucky or Tennessee for our inland waterways such as the 17 national labs, which are our secret weapon in job growth across our country, such as supercomputing, where we seek to lead the world in supercomputing, another great source of job growth. And a big part of our budget has to do with nuclear weapons and national defense. And at a time when our world is so unsafe, Americans would hope we would deal with that. We work together in a fair and accommodating manner under challenging fiscal strength constraints to create a bipartisan bill. The sum, as I said earlier, is 37.5 billion, 355 million more than last year. Reaching a bipartisan consensus wasn't easy. 
We received an allocation for defense spending that was higher than last year by about $1.163 billion, but $808 million lower for the non-defense parts of our budget. The funding includes several federal agencies that do important work, including the U.S. Department of Energy, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Bureau of Reclamation, the National Nuclear Security Administration, and the Appalachian Regional Commission. We also started with an unrealistic budget proposal from the President, which cut the Corps of Engineers by $1.4 billion and proposed $2.3 billion in new mandatory funding for the Department of Energy. The bill that Senator Feinstein and I negotiated supports our waterways. It puts us one step closer to doubling basic energy research, helps to resolve the nuclear waste stalemate, cleans up hazardous material at Cold War sites, and maintains our nuclear weapons stockpile. We also conducted extensive oversight of the President's budget request and the Department of Energy. And as, as I mentioned earlier, we eliminated at least one low priority program to reduce waste. That saves about $125 million. That was the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor in France. Started in 2005 with an initial cost of $1.1 billion, but we've already invested that much and the project will not likely completed, be completed until after 2025. As I mentioned earlier, we worked together to keep the big uranium projects on time and on budget. It is now on time and on budget. It will be 90% designed before it's constructed. And we're, we're also working to get under control the MOX facility and facility in New Mexico. Mr. President, 77 senators submitted requests to us, and we worked hard to accommodate requests of every senator. We've had many other senators who've come to us since then with amendments they'd like to offer. Most senators, I'd say in the 80s, have something that they think is important in this bill. So if senators decide that we need to spend less money, I guess they need to be prepared to send us letters suggesting what they'd like to take out of the bill. Uh, since we've put letters into the bill based upon the amount of money the law said we should spend. The last time the United States Senate passed this bill, the Energy and Water Appropriations Bill, under the regular order was 2009. I look forward to a regular appropriations process and would briefly highlight a few of the parts of the bill. One, waterways infrastructure. The bill restores 1.4 billion that the President proposed to cut from the Corps of Engineers it sets a new record level of funding for the core and a regular appropriations bill. Many senators have urged us to do this. There is not a funding line in the, in, in the bill that has more support than the Army Corps of Engineers. Rebuilding locks and dams, dredging our rivers and harbors, working to prevent floods and storm damage, building environmental restoration projects. If we'd simply approve the president's request, the Corps would have received less than what Congress appropriated in 2006 setting us back more than a decade. In Tennessee, we provided enough funding to continue building a new Chickamauga lock in fiscal year 2017. Up to 37 million will be available to the United States Army Corps of Engineers to continue work on the Chickamauga lock. Only last month, the Corps reiterated in its most recent study that the Chickamauga lock continues to be the fourth highest priority of essential American waterways to be rebuilt. We also included $1.3 billion for the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund. This is the third consecutive year that we funded the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund consistent with the funding level that Congress recommended in the Water Resources Development Act. This will permit us to deepen harbors, including Gulfport, Charleston, Mobile, Texas, uh, Louisiana, Anchorage, Savannah, uh, harbors on the West Coast. Doubling basic energy research is a goal I've long supported, and it's one of the most important things we can do to unleash our free enterprise system. Senator Durbin and I have worked together on an amendment to the energy bill that increases the authorized funding levels for the Office of Science by about 7% per year, which would double the Office of Science's budget from a little over $5 billion today to more than $10 billion in 10 years. That's the money basically, that the United States government spends on energy research. The Senate adopted our amendment by voice vote, which demonstrate how, how much support there is for the goal. The President's proposed to spend even more on energy research, including the Mission Innovation Program 
the pledge launched by the United States and 19 other countries at the Climate Summit in Paris to double federal clean energy research over the next five years. The problem is, Mr. President, that President Obama's budget request proposed $2.259 billion in new mandatory funding for the Department of Energy. However, his commitment to doubling federal clean energy research with mandatory funding comes at the expense of other resources and other agencies, which is at best unhelpful and at worst misleading. It's wishful thinking, and everyone knows it's not going to happen. So instead, we focused on priorities for discretionary funding annually approved by Congress. That is the line, the bottom line, that's under control and is not the source of our federal debt problems. Our top priority was the Office of Science, which includes $5.4 billion to support basic energy research, $50 million more than last year, the second year we've been able to increase funding for the Office of Science, which sets a new record level of funding for that office in a regular appropriations bill. This puts us one step closer to doubling funding for federal basic energy research. The bill also includes $2.92.7 million for ARPA-E, an agency that invests in high-impact energy technologies a little more than last year, 1.7 more. The bill also supports the Department of Energy's continued efforts to advance exascale computing and includes a total of $285 million to produce these next-generation computers. Nuclear power provides about 20% of our country's electricity, 60% of our carbon-free electricity. So if we're going to have the abundance of clean, cheap, reliable energy that we want and need, we're going to have that. We need to unleash nuclear power by removing obstacles in its way. Our legislation sends a strong signal about our support for new technologies in the next generation of nuclear power plants. We included $94.5 million for advanced reactors, $21 million more than the President's budget request. We included $95 million for small modular reactors, $32.5 million over last year. One way our bill helps is by taking important steps towards solving our country's stalemate over what to do with nuclear waste, a bipartisan issue and a goal that Senator Feinstein and I agree on and have been working hard to accomplish. Our legislation, therefore, includes a pilot program. This was Senator Feinstein's suggestion three years ago for, for consolidated nuclear waste storage, which she and I have introduced the past four years. The new sites we're seeking to establish would not take the place of Yucca Mountain. We have more than enough used fuel to fill Yucca Mountain to its legal capacity, but rather would complement it. We also provide funding for the U.S. Department of Energy to store nuclear waste at private facilities approved by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, such as the one proposed in West Texas. We're also supporting research in this bill that will help continue the work that's necessary to safely extend nuclear power operating licenses from 60 to 80 years. In my view, the simplest, easiest way to have a large amount of new carbon-free electricity in the near term. Finally, Mr. President, this legislation provides a total of $12.9 billion for the National Nuclear Security Administration and fully funds the warhead life extension programs recommended by the Nuclear Weapons Council and the design of the Ohio-class replacement submarine. It also supports crucial weapons facilities related to our national security. The bill provides $575 million for the uranium processing facility in Oak Ridge. It keeps the project on track to be completed by 2025 at a cost of no more than $6.5 billion. The legislation also advances our efforts to clean up hazardous materials at Cold War sites. A total of $5.4 billion is provided to support cleanup efforts, which is $144 million above the President's budget request. Mr. President, this bill adequately funds our nation's energy and water priorities. It fully complies within the spending limits established by the Budget Control Act. The Budget Control Act continues a line of spending for the appropriated dollars that is the bottom line there, the blue line there, that has been flat since 2008 and only grows with the rate of inflation for the next 10 years, according to the Congressional Budget Office. That blue line is not the source of the federal debt problem. It's the rest of the line, 
which spends three times as much as the amount of money that we're spending in the 12 appropriation bills we'll be devoting for the next two weeks. I thank Senator Feinstein for her leadership and her cooperation. I urge senators to support the bill. We're already working with senators on amendments that they seek to offer. We hope to be begin voting on some this afternoon in an open amendment process and proving that the appropriations process works.